making money. I don't think that has anything to do with it. You know what I'm saying? I wish it was that easy. <laughs> People have all these simple theories on how you make money. Oh, die. Oh, we gotta do this. And I'm like, really? Is it working for you? <laughs> you got money? Because you got a good haircut? <laughs> People, people have weak theories. Weak theories, my friend. So let's give you some real theories on how you actually make money. By the way, guys, never get advice on how you look for men. I mean, well, if you like women, get your mistakes on get get your mistakes corrected by women. <laughs> so many dudes are like out there giving style advice. I'm like, I don't want your style advice. Why don't I want your style advice? I ain't attracted to you. You're not attracted to me. So um, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get started here. Give me one second. I'm going to pull this up. Don't bring any weak theories here. Give me something good. Give me something good. Who has a theory? What do you think is the most correlated thing with wealth creation? Who knows? Who has something? What makes people wealthy? Any opinions? I've heard a lot. I mean, I've heard people say, what makes you wealthy is uh, hard work, persistence, mindset. Uh, this dude said haircut, knowledge. Yeah, that's probably closer. Um, education, really? You think everyone who has education is financially free? I don't know about that. Like Jim Rhodes said, formal education will make you a living, but self-education can make you a fortune. Um, the trillionaire life said hello. Damn, trillionaire, eh? Are you are you uh, Jeff Bezos? Okay, let me do something here. Now I'm gonna share my screen on Instagram too. Congruency makes you wealthy. I mean, let me maybe I should answer the question here, right? Since I asked it, in my opinion. Um. Let me see if I find, is Danny gonna be live on this guy? So he can share my screen on Instagram. I, I'll tell you this, I think wealth comes from a combination of things. It's a little bit like making soup, right? If you just got one thing in your soup, it's not very good. So when people give me one thing, like ah, just work hard and it's gonna work out, I don't think that's true. I would say, number one, you need a little luck in the sense that it's born healthy enough, got enough brain power to compute a little bit. That's number one. Um, number two, I would say that um, you need skill set, and it has to be a skill set that's in demand, right? A lot of people, and it has to be rare. So rare and in-demand skill set. If it just think about LeBron James, why does LeBron James make so much money? Well, is it in demand to be a sports athlete? Do people like to watch sports? Yes, they do. Number two, is it easy? Is it rare to be six foot eight and highly coordinated like LeBron James? Uh, it's not common at all. It's extremely rare. So he has a rare in-demand skill. He was born, he had some luck on top of that, and he's worth whatever, 500 million plus. Now, you might say, what if I don't have luck? That's a valid point. You have to create a little luck, you know what I mean? You gotta create a little bit of luck or else nothing's gonna happen for you. All right, Tyler, you gotta come on, unmute yourself and answer the question about Danny. Is Danny gonna come on here? Adam, you can always do it yourself. All you got to do is go live, go on my live or Adam and um, yeah. Okay. So let me, let, I'm going to jump into this. I want to talk about, so the reason I'm doing an e-com talk right now is because it's extremely rare and in demand to have e-com skill. A lot of people tell you they have e-com skill, but come on, man. Really, you think they do? I doubt it. 
if you have skill, you have to be able to show it. Let me show you. So I built a team, my company, I'll give you an example. Here's yesterday, one of my companies, I won't say which e-com company, let me turn the brightness down, just to show you that, you know, skill, you can build skill. This is a Shopify reporting app, it shows $197,000 yesterday. That's yesterday, that's not for a month, that's not for a year. That's just yesterday, $197,000. And 358,000 people visited one of my e-com brands, 400,000 sessions. So that, that takes skill. That takes skill for you guys to build. If you have that skill, money comes in. And if you don't have that rare and in-demand, I, I was talking to somebody who's like, I'm getting a degree in political science. I'm going, okay, that's great. Get a degree in political science. My question to you is what's the goal? And the person said, the goal is I wanna make above average income. And I said, well, do you think it's rare and in demand to have a politically put a political science degree? I'm not saying you can't do it, but if your stated goal is wealth creation, then it has to follow the rules. I told you a little luck, which is outside of our control, so we don't even need to talk about it. And then it needs to be um, rare and in-demand skill set. And I don't think political science is a rare and in-demand skill set. In fact, have you ever met somebody who was like, I'm hiring, what do I need? I need someone with a serious political science degree. If I don't have a political science degree, my business will fall apart. I'm ready to hire, hire, hire. I, I don't even know. I mean, maybe you want to be a politician. Maybe you want to go into law or something like that. Um, so yeah, that is uh, that is the, that is a big problem. Someone says, like Simon Sinek points out, it's about their why. I don't believe that many people's why is political science. There are some people. There are some people, but. You know, the best way to learn about politics, I don't think it is to be in the field, man. It's to be in the field. So at the end of the day, if you're not in the field. Um, okay, Tyler, you're going to have to unmute yourself sometimes and give me a heads up. Are you? Yeah, I'm going to go look at the All you got to do is take your iPhone and point it at your screen. What? Point it at my yeah, Zoom call that. and then. What's your uh, Instagram name, Tyler? You have to request. So you got to come on that live call. Are you on the live call? Somebody said Joe Rogan made a hundred million this week. I think he signed a hundred million dollar contract. Yes, uh, it's probably paid out over time, but it's still a lot of money. So it's good for him. He has a rare and in-demand skill getting the right audience and doing the right interviews that creates a lot of wealth so you have to ask yourself everybody watching this like let's see a comment what is your rare and in-demand skill let's see what people say i'm very curious i'll tell you what the potential of this audience is based off the answers that i see who has a rare and in-demand skill tell me what it is let's see somebody said win just win the lottery Somebody said smoking weed. Digital marketing, I mean, it has to be coding. Uh, motivating people, I'm not sure that's rare and in demand. Trading in Forex, eh, I don't know if that's rare and in demand. I mean, there's a lot of people trade in Forex. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, by the way. I'm just looking. Project management. Talking to idiots without losing your temper. Shopify, machine learning, communication. I don't know that that's rare. I know a lot of people that can talk. Knife making, is that highly in demand? Someone said no special skills. I like this person. They're honest. You gotta look at yourself honestly sometimes and be like, oops, I don't think I have a rare and in-demand skill. That's the day your life begins is where you realize you don't have what you want. And we live in a world that's very narcissistic that tells people, you know, you're loved just for who you are. Well, that's fine. You can be loved and you can be broke. <laughs> that's fine. 
your mommy might love you, but um, that don't put money in the bank account last time I checked. In fact, I read an interesting article that highly successful people, a lot of them have had one of their parents killed or similar trauma. You know, Michael Jordan, Steve Kerr, they had all these Olympic athletes. It was an interesting article. Leveraging other people's money. I'm going to go live right now. Um, are you going to... I have to... Or are you going to just jump live? What I have to do... You have to go on my live, Tyler. So you go to my you live. Request on yours. Yep, and then you request to go live. There's a button. that You can even comment and I'll send you a request. Someone said information to technology. Somebody get, said get to the point. I did get to the point. There is more information of what I just said than you've gotten in your whole life, buddy. I'm the first person to tell you the truth. You don't have a rare and in-demand skill. So, you know. Somebody said, Ty, have you been bluffing people since 2017 with old couch trauma, fake home? <laughs> it's funny. There's still some people that think that I rented a house for a day in Beverly Hills. Most of it went away once I was there for years and years and years. Now I moved back to the East Coast, but I'll tell you, and I've talked about this before, and, and you'll, you're gonna have to deal with this. Some of you are gonna build a rare and in-demand skill set, and guess what's gonna happen? People are gonna come out of the woodwork trying to reinvent the story of how you got it. In fact, I read an article, there's five ways that people cope with other people being more successful, uh, successful with them. One of them, is say that they cheated very common you see that in politics a lot people are like oh jeff bezos cheated i mean we all cheated if you were born without hiv for example millions of kids are born in countries with with hiv on day one of their life we all kind of got lucky compared to them so people say they cheated people say they got lucky um, and there's a certain sense to that. I mean, Jeff, I don't know. Maybe Jeff Bezos cheated. I don't know. But I can tell you he built something that people want that's rare. One good store you can go and get low price stuff delivered to your doorstep in sometimes two hours. Seems to be in demand. Numbers don't lie. You know? So I think that um, you, you got to learn to deal with that. Are people going to come flying at you? People did it with me. I came on the scene. I mean, I've been an entrepreneur since I was a teenager. I started in e-com since 01, but I was always more private. I, when I went public in 2015, how do people cope with that, you know? They cope with it by going, oh, this guy's luck, or this is fake, or he cheated. It's The internet has all three of those stories. People don't want to come to the realization that I was lucky enough to build rare and in-demand skills, and they don't have them. The good news is if you don't have them, you can build them. You know what I'm saying? So what's an example? Ecom's one. Social media is one. Um, the ability to raise capital is one. The ability to understand game theory. The ability to read people. The ability to be persuasive. The ability to do public speaking. You know? The ability to um, juggle opposing concepts in your brain. You're going to have to mute um, Tyler. So yep. I think that, um, you know, learn to deal with that, guys, because it, it will be, um, it will be a very important skill set. Also, how about emotional resilience, man? How many of you are emotional resilient? You know, the average person gives up after three times. It's like after one mistake, like 50% of people give up on any given task. Second mistake, it's something like whatever, I have 80%. And by three mistakes, 90% of people are gone. And it's interesting. 90% of people are gone. Guess what? 90% of people, uh, well, 10% of people have most of the wealth in the world. And I know that's unfair. But I grew up seeing that that's unfair. I don't know what you can do about it completely. Um, part of it's part of the capitalistic system we live in 
But you know what? You know that it's not really capitalism, right? You know when Genghis Khan was conquering the world 2,000 years ago, or less than 2,000 years ago, that Genghis Khan was taking all the wealth for himself. It was less than 10%. So this thing's been going for a long time. You know, people ask what I think about the riots. I think there, there's people have been repressed and now people revolt. It's happened over and over. It happened in France. It's, it's happened in uh, Vietnam. I, if you study the Vietnam War, people flip out. Eventually they revolt. They, to the point of dying, it happened in the 1960s in the U.S. But the bigger systemic problem, which is why do some people have so much more money than other people? This has been an age-old problem. I'm talking from the beginning of mankind. There was one dude who had a tribe and a cave that was bigger than everybody else's. And other people were jealous. And what I'm trying to say is I've learned that sometimes if you can't beat it, you should join it. And I'm not saying join the elite or whatever. I mean, use whatever word you want. What I'm saying is you should focus on your own life, man. And um, all the politics in the world ain't going to solve your life, sadly. I wish politicians, you know, <laughs> could solve our problems. When's the last time a politician solved the problem? Name one. You know? Somebody said, brother, you can be a cook. That's not a rare skill. If you're the best at it, you can be rich. Uh, that's not really true. If you're a cook, but you also understand the restaurant business, you understand how to capitalize a business, you understand how to market a business, you understand how to hire people correctly, you understand a little bit of legal, you understand a little bit of um, taxation. Now it's rare to be a chef that understands all that. So it's not really true. I'm telling you, I gave you guys an immutable law you can try to buck it till the day you die. You try to fight this, what I told you. It's rare and in-demand skills that create wealth. And if you don't like it, um, your best bet is to join an alternate universe. And those of you, you should trip on some psilocybin mushrooms or something or try to do some astral projection till you're not on planet Earth anymore because our DNA ain't changing, baby. Human DNA ain't going to change. It's not going to change. Change at the rate of 1% per millennia <laughs> millenniums and you'll still be you know you're about the same as your great 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 grandpa really you think you're different you think you have different needs wants and desires no come on all this government stuff ain't gonna solve nothing but people like to pretend it does okay i'm gonna find here's tyler i'm gonna bring tyler on and into this live call he's gonna point his camera at the um, at his screen. At his screen. Tyler, Tyler, yep. you're gonna have to mute. You're gonna have to everything mute. you have. Everything you have. Yep. Working on it. I'm gonna share my screen, and here we go. Five mistakes most people make with ecom. All right, let's jump into it. I wanted to talk a little bit on some other things because somebody said you look rough, Doc. I am. I have been rough life. Been quarantined. My hair's not cut, but it's good, man. Turn those lemons into lemonade, my friend. Someone said your silence about the riots is killing. I just talked for about fifteen minutes about what I think about current events. I'll summarize by this: repress people, revolt. So that's what you're seeing. Number two, politicians never solve anything in the long run. We think they do, but they don't. <laughs> the, pa the patient, uh, doctor, doctor, the operation was successful, but the patient died. That's politics. Yes, they passed the law. Yes, they introduced a regulation. That's the, but the patient died. The society didn't get better, you know? Um, so let's talk about econ. Bill, I'm going to give you an example of rare and in-demand skills that you can begin to build today, literally today, and start to find some success, hopefully, especially financially. Okay. All right. The truth about e-com. You, you're seeing a lot of people out there talk about e-commerce and why you should get in it. So the truth about e-com, right there. See how few people really succeed? That's that little thin 
little, little, little thin sliver of success. Okay. And I want to show you about that little sliver. So e-commerce is not get rich quick, quick. But what I'm trying to say is learning from a mentor is quicker than any other way I know. I started as an entrepreneur at age 19. I had my first mentor, a guy named Joel Salatin. By the way, he was just on Joe Rogan. I don't know, last week. That was his second time on Joe Rogan. So Joe Rogan is a big fan of my first mentor, Joel Salatin. And Joel Salatin is the one who really taught me to start understanding people and marketing. And marketing, in many ways, is the beginning of most businesses, branding especially. It, so, okay, without a brand, you're a commodity. Now, here's a graph. 2009 to today, you'll see growth rate of about 3% on e-com. Adopt, e-com adoption, the average person stopped going to a store, start buying their stuff online. You see 19, in 2009, it was growing at 3%, blah, 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 it went, or 5%, and it went all the way up until this year, the thing went haywire and went up 27%. 27, and the year's not even over. So whenever you see those points, you see like this, and then you see this, that point right there is called an inflection point. You always have to look for inflection points, okay? Inflection points are where wealth's created. And you can go for many years and have a hard time creating you know, real revenue, but when that inflection point comes, you better wake up, drop what you're doing, and change your life. That's, that's my advice to you. Now, why most e-com businesses fail? Simple. They're either selling a product. I call this the four Ps, okay? They sell a product nobody wants or people don't really want. Number two, they don't know their numbers. There's a, a billionaire guy that I know that I look up to. His name Tilma Petita. He owns the Houston Rockets. He told me that. He said, Ty, people don't know their numbers. So they might be grow they might be building an e-com business, but they don't understand their Google Analytics. They don't understand all the the metrics, the KPIs that go into it, the ROAS, the ROI, you know, conversion rates, CPC, EPC, CPA, EPA, all these things. By the way, that might sound complicated for you, that's fine. Um, so number two, bad marketing, man. Like you have a good product. You know the saying? Oh yeah, let me turn the comments off for a second. And you'll be able to read better. You guys ever heard the saying, if a tree falls in the middle of the woods and no one's there to hear it, does it make a noise? And the answer is, who cares? That's the same way I feel about most people's business idea. They've got a good idea. It's like the tree falling in the woods, bam. But there's nobody there that knows about it. Do you really think that, you know, everything in the world that we buy is the best. Do you really think McDonald's is the best food? No, but they're good at marketing. Do you really think that, you know, um, Thomas Edison was better than Tesla? No, but he had more quote unquote power and marketing ability, virality. He knew how to spread a message. And so Tesla kind of disappeared until recently, or at least the understanding of him. Um, Number four, people have bad websites. Just bad. I'm gonna show you who has a website. Let Let's look here. Actually, let's just let's just look at a product. What's a product you guys buy online? Um, what's something people buy? How about cleaning supplies? Right now, everybody's buying cleaning supplies, right? So let's just go here to Google Shopping. Let's see who comes up here. Let's not look at the big, big, big brands, but let's look at kind of. All right. JCP, JPC, oh, that was that JC Pennies? Okay, look at this website. This is a horrific website, okay? But they're, they're up here spending money on Google Shopping. First of all, look at the font size on this thing. There's a cognitive bias in the brain called availability. If something's not easy for me to read, I'm going to move on. I can't even see this thing. I got good eyes. I got lazy. I don't even need these glasses. These have blue blocker to like block the laptop. But look at this website. If you could make a website even remotely similar to this in the cleaning supply space,